All right, let's, let's get into it. Got to pay some bills. So, new yep. sponsor this year, Lion Energy. It's a huge, uh, huge deal for me. Um, uh, partnering for year 2024 and beyond. The um, Safe, Silent, Renewable Power. They make fantastic products for like virtually every application, commercial, residential, your RV, your boat. And um, all you blue collar guys out there, job sites, you guys got to check out the Safari. It's a lithium generator. Comes with solar panels that think of run all day, probably a week or two on a job site without having to worry about getting charged. Um, fantastic products. I'm running for all you fishing fans. I'm running the 1300s for the trolling motor. Let me tell you, <laughs> you can't beat these things. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I'm happy about the, uh, the partnership with Lion Energy. So make sure you guys check them out. Hit them on the link in the bio. And uh, continuing for season two of Road All American, we have Rock Form back with us, um, providing the mounts and everything. So guys, if you're running 75 miles per hour in your bass boat on a, a lake, you got to have your phone somewhere. You might as well have it at the console. Use the twist lock. Go to rockform.com right now or go to the link in the bio, coupon code DMiller25, you get 25% off your order. It's the last mounting solution you'll ever need for your phone. And the cases are super durable. Even the screen protector is un un unbelievable. I've had this screen protector since February of last year, and it looks like it's brand new. And the cool thing is, too, when you put it on, you don't have to wipe bubbles out. It just sticks in your and you go. So make sure you guys check them out. Rock form and Lion Energy. All right, let's get into it. I'm kind of uh, got butterflies over here. Got to work the kinks out, right? So last time we I, I had you on was the first episode last year, and we were competing against each other on the Bay. This year, it's the Potomac. What do you yeah. think is going to take the win? I think you need 17, 18 pounds, Dave. Okay. Ed thinks it's going to take about... 20 pounds to win. I think 17, 18 if it's tough. Um, what else? What do you think? What do you think the uh, the winning bait's going to be? Uh, that I don't know. Um, possibly a chatter bait. It'll be rattle trap. You know, I can name a whole bunch of stuff. I, I don't know, Dave. Till I get out there and just really start hitting the water a little bit more tomorrow. Rich, uh, uh, I'm not. Rich Go ahead. Lingren just, I, sorry if I butchered your last name, man. Hella Bass just joined. He just uh, did a terrific job last week um, in Bass. There you go. Okay. No, no the, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I hope it's a power fishing deal. That's what I'm hoping for. That's my wheelhouse. Just put my head down and grind. Get the five bites. That's all I need. It's a marathon, not a race. Uh, yep. But the, um, yeah, I don't know. So, so th last year, you were saying last year you didn't do the uh, the whole trail. This year, what do you think? If you do good this this tournament and Oneida, you'll do the whole trail? Yeah, I'm going to play it by ear, you know. Got a couple of health issues going on and losing my best friend, Paul, you know, my traveling buddy. So, so it's going to be a tough year on me. His son's coming down. He's going to fish. He's taking, bringing his boat and Paul's truck. So, I don't know. We'll be the same without him but i'm gonna see how it goes and uh try to fish you know i'm gonna probably fish a few more of them this year see, see how the health goes i hear you if not I'm always down at the wild card <laughs> i love it down there he's down tennessee alabama somewhere down there good time here to be there the only thing is it uh messes with my uh my deer going in rut yeah. you know second week in november and uh i'm down in alabama fishing but that's okay you got to give up something yeah so for you guys at home, friend of ours, very good friend with Ed, traveling buddy, uh, Paul Kimball passed away last year. So uh, definitely condolences and shout out to his whole family and um, everybody that knows him, all his friends. He's a great guy. Um, he's going to be missed, especially here in the BFLs and the Toyotas and the Opens. Fish the Opens, too. But, yeah. So you going to fish yes. them all day you plan on all of them yep. all the bfls all the toyotas all the northern toyotas i should say 
um, and see where this takes me. Um, it's going to be an interesting year for sure. This is definitely yeah. going to be an yeah. interesting year. Um, last year, I, I, day two, I did terrible in the regionals. And this year, I need to, I really need to redeem myself. So, but the, uh, the five events, that's what I'm looking forward to, you know, is go out there and catch them. And uh, I'm just happy to be on the water. This is really my first, uh, no, second, going to be a second time out this year. I haven't even fished at all. I've been so busy with so many other things. I have my uh, second daughter now, <laughs> so got our hands Heck. full at home. Uh, Heck, thank you, bro. On that. So it's it's uh it's been a it's been a wild past couple of months for me. <laughs> then yeah, the, yeah they, kids will keep you full, keep you a full time job right there. Yeah, man. And then the boat was but, for sale too, so I was waiting until last very last last minute before it went in the, for the wrap and everything, and um. Reynolds, shout out Reynolds, Team Reynolds. Uh, he had a 920 Elite, which is what I run, in stock. So I was like banking on like my boat selling last minute, driving up there, sign sign off on the next one, and getting out of there, driving straight from there to VFX Wraps. And shout out to Mike VFX Wraps too. They did a stellar job on the the artwork and the quality of the wrap. No seams or anything. It looks beautiful. They did a really good job. Um, yeah, I, I waited till last minute to do the uh to try to get rid of the boat to get another one and uh didn't work out. So I, I got the same boat and I'm good to go. Everything's running great. I have no complaints. So it's gonna be a fun, fun year running the bird again. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, last year, because you were on the first episode and the second episode, you had uh, Mike from DVT on there, but um. <clears throat> We kind of throughout the year we kind of came up with this like segment of the the show where it's like what's your go to bait? What has it been for the past year or two um, for the guys at home that aren't tournament anglers that are just fishing fishing fans fishermen themselves but they only get to go out once in a while they don't get to go out as much as we do um, want to be able to give them a technique to go home and try or go out there bring their kids out fishing that can like guarantee bites. Um, so what, what, like, what's your desert island bait like that works all, all over the place? Well, you know me, Dave. I, I love the jig. I love jig fishing. So that's probably my number one lure. Um, uh, don't know if it's going to work here this week, but, uh, you know, for here or this week, I'm sure the spinner bait's going to be getting a lot of attention, you know. So that rattle traps. I mean, if you're down here fishing, you want to fish Potomac, uh, good way to go out yeah. and catch them. Yeah. So me, me, Last year, it was because I was going off a couple years of what was like a go-to bait of mine, and it was like a little technique that nobody really throws, mojo rig. Last year, I didn't really throw it a lot because it didn't really apply to the conditions. So last year, I threw just a 3.3-inch or 3.8-inch swim bait, like a fat body swim bait, and that was like pretty much golden anywhere I fished. I was able to get bites on. So eighth ounce head all the way up to a three quarter ounce head, depending on the depth I was fishing or the wind for that matter. And um, a lot of times too, it was like, I'd have two on deck, like an eighth ounce and a three sixteenth ounce, especially like if you're sub 10 feet. And if the wind starts blowing and it's it's windy, I don't even bother with the eighth ounce, just go straight to three sixteenths. But if it's if it ends up laying down and it's glass and it's nice and calm, drop down to that eighth ounce. If you could go a little bit smaller on your jig head, um, that's been a that's been a stellar uh, technique. And I mean, it's not nothing new. Millions of people throw a swim bait, but I'm telling you for bass all year long, from from pre spawn all the way to the fall transition, that bait catches them. Okay. Yeah, you had a good bit of luck this last year, Dave. You did well. Made it to the regional and yeah. got a little short on that new one this year. We're going to Kerr. So hopefully Kerr is fishing a little bit better than it was last time I was there. It's been several years ago. But uh, we still managed to catch fish on Kerr. It's just uh, it was a little harder than I'd ever seen it before. i never been there, so that's going to be fun. Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah, hopefully the grass is up and the fishery is back a little bit. I know I think they had 
had, fishing really went down. I don't know if I had a big fish kill or, or what it was several years ago and we were down there. I mean, we managed to catch fish, but the weights were really super low and I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully it's come back. I'm hoping it's got it come yeah. back. Yeah. From every, everything I've heard and read, it sounds like kind of like a, a James River deal where it's like you're, you're, you're going to filter through a lot of 12 inchers and then all of a sudden you crack a six or something. Um, yeah. So it's, it's like th- that whole like two and a half to four pound range is like few and far between, but there's a ton of small ones and, and a lot of big ones. You just got to filter through the small ones to get to the big ones. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and like I said, hopefully the grass is growing back real good there by the time you get down there. So. Hey, Paul just good joined day. us. Uh, Paul Jr. What's up, okay. brother? Are you coming down here or what? He's, he's coming down oh. tomorrow. Yeah, I didn't know if he could, if he can talk to you or not. Is he just typing to you, I guess? Okay, yeah. yeah, he's going to be on the water tomorrow morning, supposedly. Uh, had some battery issues. Hopefully, got them all straightened out. Hopefully, this guy have to hit up line energy. <laughs> I say, Dave, you got to hit him some battery there. Yeah, you, you got to talk, Paul. You have to get you some thirteen hundreds. That's right. Controller motor won't know what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, can't wait to get after him tomorrow again. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Exciting, coming down to fish, first tournament for me this year, and then head up to Oneida after that. Well, I'm sorry, we're going to come back here for the Toyota Series, and then head yeah. to Oneida. So. Yeah, we'll be back down here in a couple weeks for Toyota. That's going to be a good one, because that'll be like, we know they're post-spawn at that point, yeah. and we can, it'll be a lot easier to pattern them and uh, really get a good bite going. Plus, are there any are there any tournaments coming out of Matter Woman between now and then? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at a lot of schedules, but most likely it's probably going to be some tournaments come out. Yeah, just like the Upper Bay, man. They have tournaments every weekend. Every I know weekend. There's you know? going to be one out of Leesylvania. Yeah. Yeah, they come out on the Virginia side and come out on the Maryland side here on the Potomac. Yeah. So it definitely gets over quite a bit yeah i don't think the fishing pressure is going to play a role thanks Craig. most definitely i don't think it's going to play a role as much during the spawn i don't know like like we were talking earlier about specific places if you see a lot of boats in one area the fish are spawning on other creeks they're not getting touched you know so depending on where you end up if you're with the pack yeah, you're going to be fishing for pressure fish. But I think if you try to steer away from the beaten course, you have a better shot at getting more consistent bites. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. And the guys get in, they start stirring up the water. Everybody running through the same weed patch with the electric motors. Kind of scared them girls. Yeah. Get them locked all day long. So what are you are you running the same boat this year from last year or? Yeah, I'm running a D520 R from Big Sports Center. Um, same boat, 2022. I don't have that many hours on it. Like I said, I didn't fish a whole lot last year, and uh, you know, hours this year. You better put some hours on it. <laughs> Got to, yeah. We'll put a few on it tomorrow. Yeah, man. Man. The Merck's probably burnt out or yeah, whatever. Merck's treating you good over there? Yeah, yeah. Everything went good. I always take it up to Vicks, get it winterized and tuned up every year, and they take care of me. Yeah. Same thing with me with rentals. Drop it off. They take, they give it an overhaul, check everything, winterize it. It's, I, my boat's stored outside, so I kind of have to do that, but. I know a lot of guys local, they'll keep their boats like in the water year round uh, unless it's iced over, like Candlewood especially. They're there all the time. It could be freezing. I I got better things to do than be cold. <laughs> so, yeah, right. right. Uh, I, just, I don't know. I think at the end of this season, 
like once the championship's done and that's a wrap, unless I have some guide trips booked, I just uh kind of want to just, just like veg out from from fishing and do other things. Yeah. Well, I went and bought me another little boat. I bought a crabbing boat. I did a little bit of crabbing this year, and we'll get down the ocean, catch some flounder, stuff like that. So I plan on keying in quite a bit of that this year, hopefully. So, what, so. It, here's a good one because you're a saltwater fisherman too. So I want to try to introduce this to the show this year. What's your favorite fish to eat? Oh man, you put me on the spot here. Um, I used to say rockfish, but kind of got away from that. I, I like catfish, man. I had catfish really? the other day. Yeah. And I uh, love fried catfish. That's why I like going down south, down to Alabama, Tennessee, and Virginia. Find the catfish fries. Of course, when you get up north, I like uh, fish fries upstate New York. They have good fish fries, haddock, and, you know, of course, can't beat, uh, can't yeah. beat that. Haddock's really good. Really good. Walleye, you got walleye too. Can't let them out. Uh, everybody says walleye is like the best tasting fish to ever eat, and I every single time I catch one, it's in a tournament, and my live wells are full. Like I can never right. catch one while I'm practicing. It's like a pull up on a spot. Like, oh yeah, I got a six pound smallie on or something. Nope, it's a ten pound walleye. Oh, right. hey, yeah. what's up, bro? Um, fishing with Jr. Just joined. Uh, he said walleye and yellow perch. Yeah, yellow perch is really good too. I just hate the bones. Oh, you eat the bones? Oh, yeah, I don't go that far. No, I said I hate the bones. Oh, I'm you gone. hate the bones? I thought you said you. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, yeah, yellow perch and walleye, they're the same family. They're good fish. Both of them yeah. are good fish. No, what, one of my buddies, he's like, uh, we'll go out to do sushi once in a while, and uh, he likes eel. I that I don't know. Just looking at, I can't, I can't do it. It's, it's yeah. keeps yes. me out. Yeah. The, the, how's he get a fix? Because I know it's big down here, and a smoke eel. A lot of people used to eat that a long time ago, but I don't hear much about it anymore. But they smoke the eel, and they say it's unbelievable. But I, I'm like yeah. you, I don't eat it. It's no, too it's, much like a yeah. snake to me. Yeah, no, it keeps me out. We had uh, like even when you have them, when they're like uh, like uh, you them as bait for stripers like you go out on like yes. a charter boat or something or like saltwater this like the the whole striper crowd like connecticut they, they, that's huge like long island sound there's a lot of saltwater fishermen and they'll just bring buckets of eels with them and you could kill those things and they're still like they still uh they're still alive you pick them up they wrap around your arm right. it's, it's no i'm i'm good <laughs> yeah I fish a lot with eels. I break their back before I fish with them, though, for catching stripers. But Maryland's got the whole bay shut down this year, so we can't even catch and release stripers or anything, or rockfish, whatever you want to call yeah. them. Uh, this year, they just shut it down. So, it is what it is. You know, they're trying to protect the species, but uh, Maryland's pretty tough when it comes to the stripers. Yeah. But I don't think the hook and line guys was really hurting them. You know, it's all these... Uh, netters out there and of course they do it for a living i understand that but uh they're the ones that really that hurt the fishing yeah you know not i or a couple other guys that are out fishing i mean most of the time we're letting a lot of fish go anyway i bring home one or two to eat every once in a while that's yeah. it yeah like back home there was like i don't even know what the limits are now i haven't paid attention because i haven't went striper fishing but the um i remember at one point it was like they had to be like between 32 and 36 inches to keep and i'm like i can't keep a 31 inch striper but they could have a whole like five dozen 16 inches or whatever at the supermarket yep. like are you kidding yep. me like it, yep. it, i don't know it, it, even if you just want to go catch one make a couple sandwiches and be done with it you know like you know two two fish you know two a 30 a 30 inch 36 inch striper probably you have food for two days but right if you catch two you know 20 inches or something 15 16 inches you know you get a couple of sandwiches out of them like what's i don't know yeah i don't i don't think the slot limits are i think it's a, it's a sham you got me hungry when we were talking there earlier today yeah so the rock rockfish with crab and peril that's pretty dang yeah. good too real good you know that's a big 
big, you know, Maryland and Virginia, that's big. You know, they catch, put the crab imperial on top and bake it. Yeah. It's real good. That's good stuff, man. I, 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 so my, my favorite fish, that's a tough one. I would, you know, you know it was actually really good. I've been getting, it's not my, my favorite, but I'll throw this out there. Uh, shout out to my buddy, Rob. He owns Uberti's Fish Market in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, so he has connections in the fish world, you know, so I'll hit him up and he'll order. Um, it comes in from New Zealand. It's imported, uh, but orange roughy. Oh, yes. Orange it, roughy is very good. It's so good. It's so buttery and you broil it. Oh, my God. We got to go out to dinner, man. <laughs> Forget this podcast. <laughs> I know. As soon as we get done, we'll have to yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's it's uh, good. Uh, Everything's good. JRS, can't wait. They shut down the harvest for stripers in your area for how long? I think it was talking about you with the bay. Uh, I think it's shut down for a whole year. Uh, I don't know if they're going to open up in June or maybe after the spawn. But I, when this spawns on, it's shut down, and they know that you know they're coming up on the flats. They're going up in Susquehanna River come from the ocean they come up to that fresh water they got to get them sea lice off of them and that's one way to do it uh they come up a couple times a year but right now they're up there spawning i mean i guess i'll talk about age when i was little i'd go up there i mean it's nothing to catch a 20 or 30 pound 40 pound striper off the bank you know it was just a blast when i was a kid we'd walk up the bank that's how i fished uh, i didn't have a boat i mean every every sunday because they start let they don't let water out of the uh the dam until late on Sunday, so you can wade way out there. But when you hear them sirens, you got to get back towards the bank because that water does start coming down. But can't catch them this year, maybe next year. Hey, so the area where the the ship hit the bridge, I'm not familiar with that that particular area. But is that freshwater right there, or is that brackish? No, that's saltwater. That the main harbor going into Baltimore City. Um, that's all saltwater. I mean, you got a couple of creeks that come out on there. It's got a little bit of fresh water, but most of that's all brackish water there. Yeah. So that, getting a little closer. So Bay Bridge. That won't affect any uh, no tournaments no. or anything. No. Now they've been seem like they're having a lot of tournaments out in Northeast up there. You know, I think they beat a little bit too hard in the South, but I guess I probably shouldn't say that. But you know, they're yanking all these fish off the bed sooner or later, as well as you know it. Uh, going to pay its toll. I mean, them fish, if they can't go out and redig dig another bed or can't find somewhere to, to lay them and get fertilized, the fishing industry is just going to yeah. go down. Yeah. I already see it from when I was a kid, you know, crazy. So Connecticut, they were, uh, were talking about doing some changes to the, uh, the regulations for the spawn. And I was thinking about... I, like what Maryland does, like with Potomac, there was like a couple areas that are no fish areas. They're like spawn habitat areas. Like you can't fish there, right. period. And the cool thing is, regardless of what anybody's perception is that doesn't tournament fish, like we could really police ourselves. You know, if somebody's in an area that's cheating, you know, and we, so I was thinking maybe that there could be something like that implemented on our home fisheries back home in Connecticut. The DP guy, I didn't see the point in it, the, the guy I was speaking to, but I was like, you know what, not for nothing, but there's a couple areas of Candlewood, like, if you didn't, if you, you completely eliminated fishing in these areas for like a month or so, like, just, like the entirety of the spawn, that, that lake is a hammer factory as it is, but it, it's so tough, and I, don't, I, don't th I think the population has had to dwindle. It's uh, you see the bags coming out of there, 28 pounds to win a tournament, five fish for a small lake like that, and then, you know, it's, it it really is like a world class fishery, but the it the, you got to grind for five bites. I mean, it's different now with scope and everything, but it's still a grinding fishery. You still have to grind for them. You know, what happens with the upper bay? Uh... I don't know if we really want to get in this discussion or not, because I'm not happy about it. You know, all the other outlying states are closed. Pennsylvania's got a closed season. New Jersey, Delaware, I mean, all the way up the board, New York, they're all closed, so they start bringing their tournaments down onto the Chesapeake Bay. I mean, it, it literally, it's tournaments two three, two or three a, a week. I mean, it's just crazy. 
and all the fish are being caught off beds. Then you tell me what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. If they can't, you know, it's just a matter of time. And I don't know. I keep saying I'm going to get involved with that, but I still have never got involved. But it probably make a lot of people very unhappy if they close Maryland season. But I wish they'd close it like all the other states do, just for the spawn and open it up after the spawn is done. Yeah. You know, or either like you said, come up with some regulated areas, Dave. Like to where, hey, you can't fish here. Let the fish spawn out. This is closed, just like they do on the Potomac here. And you know the areas, and most yeah. people know, you know, the areas. And and that could help. That would definitely help. Definitely, yeah. definitely help. Cause I, I, and I think in a tournament setting, you know, if somebody's out there, they're fishing, they don't know any better, they take their kid out, you know, and they just see a buoy, you know, that's marking the area, and they don't know any better, whatever, you know, if, if it's policed by a game warden, you know, give them a warning. But I feel like the, in a tournament setting, we would police ourselves, and that, yeah. that wouldn't fly. I think everybody from all tournaments, like no matter if it's MLF stuff or bass or whatever, all the different organizations, I think it would go over very well and is for the greater good. I think it, I think, I think we're on to something here. <laughs> yeah, I think we are too. I know, like I said, I'm going to, I keep saying, I tell my wife every year I'm going to get involved with this. So they need to shut our season down for the spawn. And I know it ain't going to make a lot of people happy, but that's what we need to do. Yeah. You know, we save our rockfish and stripers, whatever you want to call them, but they don't do any other species. I mean, our bass season's open year round. I mean, year round. We fish every day yeah. of the year. So, I don't know. JR asked, do you guys feel like the fishing pressure is at an all time high? Question mark, nationwide? Question mark? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's people fishing tournaments and people bass fishing now than I've ever seen in my lifetime. I mean, so many clubs, they like to come out from the woodwork, and that's what upsets me, too, is that, you know, they don't have a lot of these places, they don't have release boats, and we're dumping them off the bank, especially in the hot summertime, and I keep using, like, the Northeast River. I mean, come on, the water temperature's 80 degrees, we're holding tournaments, we're dumping these fish out right along the banks. I mean, they're not taking them out in the channel or in a little bit deeper water where it's a little cooler. And, you know, I've got friends who live on that body of water. And after a big tournament, they go out there and they see all these bass, bass fishing. You know, they're dead. They're floating. And, I mean, we're, it's killing a lot of fish, trust me. Yeah. And because they're not being handled properly. And I think that should be one of the requirements. They should have to have a release boat. they got to take them out. Yeah. And get them out there. Water. That's just my opinion, whatever it's worth. Like I said, I'll probably get a lot of people upset. But no, I, I feel the same it, way. There's too many, like, low... That's, I don't want to, I mean, this podcast is low budget. <laughs> Let's be real. Like I'm, I'm, the whole concept, I'm in my truck right now, but I don't want to knock anything, but there's too many of those like insignificant trails. Like they're just yeah. for fun. Like in Connecticut, you have clubs, right? Like Bass Nation and you have, oh, let me guess, 15 clubs. So each club's got anywhere from 10 to 20 guys, right? Some clubs have a trail, some clubs don't. For a small state with only a handful of fisheries, that's not bad, you know? And it's not, not like they're all going to, you know, be on different, right? the same fishery twice at the same time or whatever because they limit us at the boat ramps. But now tack on one – one, two, three, four more organizations with the same number of people. Now you have three or four tournaments a week on the same body of water, and it, it's a lot. Like I said, with Candlewood, it's a really pressured fishery, and every and that's why I stopped fishing the Bass Nation because it's like Candlewood, 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 Candlewood. I don't want to fish Candlewood all the time. Uh, I want to fish the river. And then, I mean, not for nothing, we have the Hudson River right right there, too. And I'm, and where I live, it's like the Hudson River is probably closer for me than the Connecticut River. So, I like, I could we could fish there. And then we have um, a lake in, uh, on the border in Massachusetts, Congamon. We never have events there. But half of it's in Connecticut, the other half's in Massachusetts. But it's not, like, the greatest fishery in the world. It's tough, but I like a challenge and a lot of guys do 
they want it they want variety of different different fisheries and just not the same place over and over again and it's aggravating it's uh and then you got the uh, uh some of the some of the lakes that have restrictions for night fishing so i know like my, my club we've always done night tournaments so there's only like two lakes we typically do the night tournament on like in the summer when it's really hot it's not good to have the fish in live all, all day in 90 degree weather you know, so it's like, okay, we'll drop it down, you know, be conservationist, drop it down to a three fish limit and do a night tournament. Do a fish from like 7 p.m. till 3 a.m. or something, you know, and it just mix it up. And, you know, I don't know. It's a, uh, I think there's too many organizations, like too many fishing organizations. Oh, and that's too many like startup fishing organizations. And I, I'm all, I'm happy to grow the sport. But it's like, when is enough enough for how many tournaments you're going to have? Like, right. and it's state by state, too, because, like, I've heard in other states, like, we're uh, talking to a buddy who's down in, like, uh, Oklahoma or Alabama, and the high, like, there's, take away us, <laughs> the, the grown men fishing, but there's, like, thousands of high school teams. Oh, yeah. Like there's probably more, more, more kids fishing in like five states down south on high school teams than there are than there ever have been in the opens. <laughs> like, yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's getting big. I mean, I'm all about you know growing the sport as well. I mean, I grew up you know, and that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional bass fisherman. I mean, you know, and I've fished up my whole life. I probably started fishing. I went on my first tournaments. I didn't have a driver's license. I rode with someone else. I think I was 15 years old, my first one. And it was here on the Potomac. And uh, <clears throat> I got drawn with, maybe some of your viewers might know him, but I mean, he was a big stick back then, Bob Dobart. I mean, he was well known in the Chesapeake Bay, the Potomac. He's one of the best fishermen I've ever known, you know, but he's gotten up in age. You know, I've never seen him around the trail. He used to run the Timonium Sportsman Show. He used to have that and run that but then i just I lost contact with him i don't know what he's doing now hopefully retired back <laughs> on the beach somewhere there you go yeah yeah i don't know dave you know it is getting big and i'm all for it i mean i really i love to see these kids fish you know and get out i mean i coach baseball for years and i'm watching kids play i mean i'd rather watch kids play as, uh going to see a major league baseball game i mean that's just the way i am because i grew up around it you know trying to teach them so, this cool. whole, same way coolest thing this uh my my uh oldest daughter her birthday was recently and like a month or so ago um it was like putting her to bed whatever and she was like hey i have a question for you dad and i'm like what's up honey and she's like can I have a fishing rod? And I'm uh, like, yeah, of course you can. I'm, yeah. I'm like, she's like, can I, have, can I have two? Actually, three. And I'm like, three? Is that, she sees like all my rods. Like I have more than one. She's like, yeah, three. And I was like, you want three fishing rods? She's like, yeah, I want a green one, a purple one, and a yellow one. I was like, okay, I can make that. And she's like, yeah, because I love fishing. And I love, those are my favorite colors. I'm like, sold. I called up Mike, DVT. Shout out to Delaware Valley Tackle. I hit him up. I was like, "Hey, I I need uh, three rods. We only he only made two. She didn't get them yet, so she can't watch the podcast. Uh, but we're having a party in uh next week. But the um, she uh, we got two. He made uh, he used ice fishing blanks, so they're like three feet, like thirty six yeah. inch rods, and you put like a little five fifty size um reel on it. A spinning reel. I'm not doing the whole Zebco thing. Get her. I'll I'll have her drop shot in no time. But yeah. <laughs> but the uh, uh, he made like like legit. She's got like a a wacky rig Senko rod and a drop shot rod. They're both three feet long. One's green. One's purple. Cork grips. It yeah. is is awesome. I can't wait to you're, take her out with them. I know you're gonna get her hooked, man. She's gonna be hooked. Yeah. Be like you fish all the time that's great that's what it's about right there you know spending time with your family and going out having fun you know a lot of, i mean 
I don't know about you, but I've lost a lot of, I used to love just the fish. I still love the fish, but I had a lot more fun when I was younger. And now when you got in, I get into heavy competition, it becomes more like a job a yeah. little bit, you know? And that's what, it takes a lot of the fun out because it, it does become a job, especially when you're fishing for money and you're trying to, to get up the ranks, you know, and make something or either get it to the classic or whatever. And it's, it, it's a job. I, I uh, fish harder than I work. I can tell you yeah. that. Yeah. It's like, like me, man. I, 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 I don't, I get, I, I do get, I, I have gotten frustrated, you know, at certain points in certain events because you, you know, you work, work your butt off to get to a certain point and then um something doesn't go right and you get frustrated it's just nature but the um i'm like super competitive like whether it's like sports when i was younger like baseball or um playing video games online you know cod or something you know i just i'm really competitive i love competition i love it, i don't know it like forces you to like try harder I don't, I don't know i i can't explain it so the fishing it's like two things i love i love being competitive and i love fishing and i don't right. love one more than the other like one's the emotion one's a, an activity but it's um i don't know it, it just works for me i don't know yeah and i know a lot of people yeah. that don't need that that aren't will never get into competitive fishing that they right. love fishing like a like the, the saying goes uh a, a bad, bad day fishing is better than a good day at work yes very true so very true yeah you can see it i mean a lot of people i mean that's what they do they are off of work and they're off time they're they want to go fishing you know and that's what it's about you know because it's another outlet to, it's just fun but when it gets a competition, to me, it's still fun, but it becomes work. Yeah. That's what me, though. But I quit for 10 years. Um, I got back into it. It was a little tough, you know, trying to work and start a new company and doing a lot of work yourself, you know, being off. So it was tough. But then after 2010, I got back into it. So. I've done fairly well since 2010. Uh, could do a little better. Hopefully, uh, do a little better this year. We'll see what happens. Yeah, man. You'll get them. You'll get them. You you, you put on a clinic a, a time or two since I've been uh, competing yeah. against you. Yeah, well, that's that's what Matt Stacy said. Oh man, an old dog. I said, yeah, an old dog can find a bone every once in a while, you know. But uh, yeah, I know how to fish. It's just you know, it's it's got to click. I mean, you're gonna have. What I've learned in a sport is you're going to have a couple bad years, but you may have a good year, but then you may get back into a bad year, but then you may have the next four or five years. It may be great years for you, but it's like a roller coaster. It really is because there's only one winner in every tournament, you know, and the rest other than that, you just try to qualify up the ladder a little bit higher so you can make it to the next step to try to, to fish for a bigger purse, you know, so I don't know. Yeah. But I'm glad I got back into it. I don't know how much longer I'll be into it. I, I will never quit fishing. I don't know how much longer I'm going to compete. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to until the wheels fall off, man. <laughs> I love that, it. That, the wheels are starting to fall off. They, <laughs> you know, you got back problems and this and that. You know, it's just crazy. Yeah. But, hey, I, as long as I can. I mean, I, I don't think anyone... I don't know. That's what cracks me up. I was just talking to a friend of mine, and I, I was like, "Why? Do, it seems like now all these announcers, even with BASS, and I'm not trying to bash anyone, in the same way the MLF, they act like if you're not 20 years old, you're too old to fish. Yeah. You know, with all this competition going on. And I know, you know, with the live scope and everything, yeah, it, it's becoming a young man's game because they grew up, they were born with a cell phone in their hand when they came out. Uh, so yeah, they're a little bit more experienced with technology than uh, people like, or such as myself and the older generation, but you're never too old to fish. I don't care who says what, I mean, look at Ricky Klon. He's still out there banging yeah. and Nick's in the, but the way that they are, it's like, it just cracked me up. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Maybe I can prove them all wrong. There you go. Hey, if not, I'm definitely trying hard on Oneida. I was fortunate enough to win one up there, so then had real good luck the following week after on the on the Coastal series. So I should have won that one, but yeah. that's the way it goes. Lost a lot of I, fish. I can't wait to go to Oneida, man. That's whew. and then um I'm jumping in in the week before I'm jumping in the cash in uh with my buddy Mike. Again, shout out D V T. Um we did it last year. I won longer or no, was it last year? No, it was the year before last year. It's twenty two. I won longer. If I had like one more kicker fish, we would have probably got like a top three or something. I don't know if I had to wait to even if I got a kicker, I, I might not have got I don't think I would have got a W, but I would have had a top three at least. But um but we still won longer, got some money, won a prize. Um but yeah, shout out to JJ too for cash. Oh, there's Mike. Mike just joined. We we're just okay. talking about you. <laughs> the uh, his ears were his ears were ringing. Yeah. Oh man, Mike, you missed it. So I you... talked about the custom rods for my daughter. We talked <laughs> about the uh, we're doing a cash in. Where were we? That's hilarious. Yeah. So, so when is that? A week before our tournament for the BFL, yeah. the cash. Yeah, the Saturday before. Oh. Okay. Yeah, a friend of mine used to live up there. He moved, went to Florida, but uh, I know he used to fish it all the time. They always talked about it. I never have fished it. No, but, they, they put on a good event. JJ, he, he yeah. does a, a really good job. It's very it's structured, really good. It's very well organized, very well ran. Um, I have zero complaints. I don't think you'll ever hear anybody complain about one of his events. They, he, yeah. they really do a good job. Um, and... It's not like like we said like before. There's a lot of there's a lot of little tournaments and stuff like when's enough enough. There's too many too many events. This doesn't apply to them. They run a very good trail in this region, and there's a lot of there's, there's a good turnout. The the tournaments I've competed in, St. Lawrence and Oneida, um, here, phenomenal. And they're, they're yeah, very they good do. with the fish care and everything too. You don't see any any bad practices or anything, so it's very uh, very well ran. I said that cash, and that's where you weigh fish in every hour. Is that how that works? No, it's, you you have a weigh in. There's flights. Oh, okay. I thought it was like every hour or something. You could bring fish to the scale. No, that. that's something. That's something I know like what you're talking about. That's not that. But the um. I'll be up there. We'll we'll fish that, and then um, have some stuff to do in between. And we got that tournament, but we haven't been there in a couple of years. I don't know why um, Steve hasn't put us there. Um, maybe scheduling conflicts or something. But I love that fishery. That's that that's most pretty much my favorite fishery because yeah. you could do Oneida. anything. Like you could go go out and drop shot. You could go cranking you can, you can go shallow for largemouth you could go deep for largemouth you could do all different sorts of techniques you could go frogging it, didn't ish monroe win there frogging or punching or something uh i don't know it's possible i i don't know i don't remember that but yeah you like you said you can target anything up there you can go shallow or you can go deep you know they got plenty of rock shelves and stuff like that up there and rock piles and grass you can almost do anything and everything and they got deep water so, one thing on the that, north side, animal moves up up there. The one thing that really, That's where really all the messed me up when the first time there was the little bowling pins marking the shoals. That I, yes, I was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't know what, yeah. what, what I was like looking at. <laughs> I never seen that before. My first time there. Yeah, on the smaller lakes up there in New York, they have that, and a couple other ones. I fish uh, back my young. Fish Cayuga has them. I think some of them. I know they had a couple of rock piles where the old uh, bridge used to go across. They got them there. And they got them on Seneca Lake. They're on a lot of the upstate New York lakes. And I love, I love upstate New York. Any anybody of water up there is yeah, great. Yeah, they're all fantastic. Yeah. A thousand islands. I mean, it's phenomenal. I mean, you can go up there. I mean, for guys that don't fish tournament, you just want to go up there and fish. And anyone's here. Just go up, especially late in the year in the fall. Man, they just 
you go out there and you can catch 60 to 100 and some fish in a few hours, you know. They'll be coming in, feeding frenzies and stuff. I, I never forget the first time I went up there and that happened. I was like three hours. I was tired of winding them fish. I yeah. caught so many fish. I mean, it was one right after another. I mean, it was phenomenal. So. I got a good one for you. So I'm on my way down. I went over this bridge a couple times. The Delaware River. You ever fish that? Yeah, back when younger days Good? Uh, uh it's tough fishery dave it's real tough because that tide it drops anywhere from it can fall seven feet so you may be fishing docks and practice that tide goes out and you're on there when the tide goes out that dock may be out of the water but it is tough but i never seen any real big bags come off of there but i mean there's fish in there it's good fish i mean a friend of mine he fishes it a lot Del Grell and uh, I mean he knows it like the back of his hand and he always seems to put good bags together. I know he helped a couple of the BASS pros when they went up there and uh, I know the guy, I won't mention his name, but Dale helped him a lot and he won some money up there so he was real happy for Dale's help, I can tell you that. But yeah, Delaware's good. It's good crabbing too up there. Yeah. So. I was curious because like it's such a big fishery and I'm like we, nobody's ever I, I never really hear anybody talk about it and uh yeah well we used to fish it a lot when i started fishing some years ago you know uh but that was all yeah. you know then like you said we'd go up to the hudson which i love fishing out of the, i think it was uh cat skills up there it was called um oh my matter of fact um we fished up there all the time and uh that's great fishery, and but they don't go back to some of them places anymore, you know. Yeah. Fish the Mohawk River. I mean, that's, I fish a lot up through there. But yeah, I like to see them come on down the eastern shore. But the facilities like in the Nanticoke, the Chop Tank. I mean, I fish that. That's all, man. You talk about moving water. That moves. I mean, you'll get a <clears throat> two or three pound largemouth, and you'll you'll swear he's you know you got a six pound smallie on. I mean, it's just phenomenal because they're so strong because of the current. Yeah. But uh, I guess because they really don't have the launch facilities and stuff like that. But it, it's tons of great fishing in the state of Maryland and New York, all over Connecticut, anywhere, you know. So go have fun and yeah. go fishing. Which, uh, which uh, tournament this year are you looking forward to the most? Um, <laughs> Mike said, shh, on Mohawk. <laughs> Well, the podcast uh, now, oh, Mike. <laughs> I, like, I like like to do very well on on this, not this uh, Potomac, but the next one for the Toyota series. I'm just uh, I'm real excited. I like to try to make the top 25 and get back down to Willard Lake. Uh, I love that lake. It's been late in the year. I've been on it. I know it a little bit. Um, I'd love to get back there. I finished uh, seventh down there in the wild card, and I think I would have a pretty good chance down there, but. I don't know. I, I always look forward to all of them, Dave. I want to win all of them. But uh, I, I love Oneida, too. I mean, without a doubt. Um, up Thousand Islands and I love Champlain. I've won probably more money on Champlain than anywhere in my career. And, you know, from when we used to fish, I fished, you know, Bass in America. A lot of guys probably won't remember it. Before MLF, you know, it was called Red Man. I mean, we used to put a lot of tournaments on up there. But we always come out of Ticonderoga. I cried like a baby and when they said, hey, we're going to go to Plattsburgh. And I'm like, what? I don't know Plattsburgh. You know, I didn't want to go up there. But now that I've learned it and I've fished it, it's like, man, it's like, yeah, I hope you go to yeah. Plattsburgh, you know? I haven't, so, I haven't been out of tie in forever. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, it's, that's fun. I, I like it going down there. But it, it's not – if you're launching out of Plattsburgh, I don't know. I know some guys that will make the run all the way down. And that's just crazy to me because there's so many good fishing spots in, in between. I mean, if you're like banking on areas that have fish, I don't know. There, and then with the that far of a distance and the you get a nasty south or north wind on the way back, you ain't coming back. My, my buddy, uh, Daryl Byron last year, shout out to Daryl. Um, he, uh, 
don't remember if it was the BFL or the Toyota. No, it was the Toyota. He ran down there, and he's going to, he's going to get back. He ended up uh, – we have a mutual friend that has a house on Champlain near, uh, near the bridge down there, near Crown Point. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of what the – I don't remember the town or what the whatever, but anyhow, he he ended up going there and going to his house and then getting a ride back to get his trailer. <laughs> oh, I know. I know it's crazy. I've made that run a couple times. It's a long run. I come to Plattsburgh, went all the way down to Ty. You go down, you know, try to you got to catch fish quick and get back quick. That's the name of the game, you know. I only came back with 18 pounds, but. And then, yeah, I could have done it in Plattsburgh, probably, you know, or around Plattsburgh. Because, like you said, there's a million places to fish. I just had keyed in on what I keyed on, you know, with that heavy grass down there. I mean, you can go to Ty and probably catch 25, 30 pounds, you know, if you get on the right fish. But it's you can catch out at North as well. Yeah. Now, I mean, I've done it. I won a tournament there in Champlain, a BFL, and I think I had a little over 20-some pounds. And I didn't go far out of Plattsburgh, I can tell you that. Yeah, they're, you know. they're in there. <laughs> yeah, they're in there. Well, let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's wrap it up. Okay. Get some dinner. Okay. Um, you got you want to shout out your sponsors and, and, and well, what you're working with? Yeah, work with Vic Sports Center out of Kent, Ohio. Helps me with my boats. Does all my repair work and everything like that. And, uh, you know, of course, Mercury Outboards, power power poles, and C and W Construction, which I own, helps me pay the bills. So. Uh, that's about all I got. Go ahead and finish up, Dave. Yeah, no, thanks everybody for joining Road All American. This is uh, episode 15 overall, season two. Um, the the uh, next episode will be on Saturday, 7 p.m. And I'm gonna save this this uh, this episode. But if it ends up being too messed up in the beginning, I'm gonna try to chop it up. Um, but maybe I'll just have Ed on again after the uh, tournament and we'll just kick it again and go over uh, some other stuff. Cause we had a little technical difficulties with the, uh, the internet. Um, but yeah, safe and successful season guys. Mike from DVT says safe and successful season guys. Thank you, Mike. Definitely. Can't wait to get up there to Oneida with you. Um, Steph, of course, <laughs> the rest of the series. I love you too, babe. Yeah. All right. We we can wrap. Yeah, you know, we can uh, we can talk after this tournament. We'll see how we did. Yeah, we, that'd be real interesting. Hopefully, we're both in the top ten, at least in the top yeah. ten. I hope. That's what I'm saying, guys. It's a you know road all American. It's a marathon, not a race. You know, it's a it's a long journey. It's the hardest journey to get there, and we're gonna we're gonna do it. And then uh, Jr. He's fishing, uh, I think Piedmont, Ohio, the uh, the Ohio division. I told him, I was like, dude, you better make it to Kirk because you get paired with me, man. It's on. That's right. But the, uh, but yeah, guys, thanks everybody for joining in. Uh, uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, check back with us on Saturday.